Jameis. Come over here. Jameis, it's cold as shit. It's cold as shit. Language. PG-13. Yeah. 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 Hello, and it is the um, f- f- 15th, day 15. Day 15, June 15th of camp. Literally is camp. And I don't know. Do you know what we're learning today? I forgot what we're learning today. We're going to learn camp cooking. I'm, I'm pretty good at cooking. In college, I cooked one meal every day. Eat the same thing every day. Discipline, diety, wrestling. Here we've got a lot of stuff to cover. Um, today we're going to get into, you know, roles, responsibilities of a guide. Uh, later on this afternoon, we'll get into uh, the psychology mod- module. Um, so we got about 45 minutes in the tent talking about roles and responsibilities. We're going to cut, cut some horses find in most outfits that you work for when you're a guide your your changes your your duties kind of change a little bit you're a little bit more higher up on the, the totem pole so to speak so livestock and property ground maintenance isn't going to be as a primary thing for you guys to be to be concerned with although everybody is versed in what they're supposed to be doing so what's a day without saddling horses safe cooking procedures and everything that you guys need to know to make sure whoever you are feeding, however many you are feeding, uh, is going to get sick and is going to be able to enjoy their meals. Uh, last thing you want to do is have everybody come back from a hunting trip and they've got cold food and there's not enough of it. That makes you look bad, makes the outfitter look bad, uh, and definitely leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. What's next on the agenda is Camp Jack stuff, which is like cooking and camp cook. There is a ride going out, so Brian has to take that out as Nick, the camp cook, jumps in to teach us a little about cooking, camp cooking. And and now we're collecting twigs for the fire. Look at, you. Look at him go. Look at these twigs, man. They're so twig-like. Wow. Crazy. Here we have the possibility of running down to the ranch 12 miles that way to pick up any excess stuff that we have or can't keep here. Whereas if you are in upper camp, what your inventory is, is what you have. So you have to be able to make sure you have enough to get you until you come back out of the woods to refill. And also make sure that if something goes wrong with your meals, that you have enough backup to still make food for the rest of the time you're out there. To get her in front of that <laughs> shot. Hmm? You want to eat? <laughs> Stick breaks right now. Yeah, right? sit for a day. Uh, doesn't matter what it is, beef, chicken, any fats, any grease, anything like that. Uh, you can just leave them in there. That'll help flavor the pan. Uh, and like good cast irons will last forever. And the longer you have them, the better they taste to cook with because they've just got all that sealed in flavor. Um, the only reason you can get... The definition of a good guy always under promises and over delivers. Um, so basically you don't want to be Oh yeah, we're guaranteed we're gonna get an animal down on the ground. That's the last thing we want to do. State of Montana, if you make a a genuine effort to recover that animal and you fail to, as long as you have consciously made an effort, you can keep up. Okay. Clients, dealing with tough situations and reading your clients. So there's four main personality traits. 
So we've been in class all day. How do you feel, Jake? Man. How do you feel, so Mitch? <laughs> that was Mitch, everybody. Or Rick. Rick. So the main calls that are made are bugles, grunts, and cow calls. There are two reasons for calling elk. Um, locate the bull and... Yeah, yeah. So I learned how to rope, and rope before I even went to right? We were out. Ready? I'll see if I can rope the camera over you. Oh, just kidding. Just kidding. <sighs> Today was a lot of schoolwork. Sitting down and going over um, just general ways or tactics of hunting and um, different ways that people hunt and kind of animals that we would hunt and uh, it was good and educational. Um, something that I probably really needed to hear because I don't really have that much experience hunting so today was a good day even though I sat down for most of it. Uh, I haven't sat down for that long since uh, college probably. But it was good. It was needed. And uh, lots of questions were asked by the students. A lot of questions because we're all from different parts of the um, U.S. And we all have uh, different ways that we all hunt. So just to learn the general way of hunting done here in the West and uh, compared to other methods of hunting out in the East or the South. But um, like I said, lots of questions were asked. A lot of it was just discussion, really, and what um, most of our goals is to be. Most of our goals is to work at an outfitter at some point out here, and just the style of hunting is different from the majority of us, or the style of hunting out here is uh, different from uh, what most of us are used to. Uh, you know, whitetail mostly. Uh, most of us are from uh, the other states of. Uh, these states that you can't sp spot and stock more of a tree stand or bait but anyways um, it was a good day lots of good discussions and uh, more to come